Welcome back. Thank you very much for joining with me on this journey. And I also want to say thank you to those of you who sent me either text messages or emails or even phone calls, uh, just talking about how you're interacting with, with what I'm teaching, what I'm learning here as well. Uh, that kind of feedback is really helpful for me. And so I, I really appreciate it. It's also exciting for me to be able to hear different people's journeys and where God is working with them in their lives. Uh, because I think each one of us has a different story and we'll find ourselves in different places while one person will be on a mountaintop top. The other person may be down in the valley. And so to be able to hear uh, stories from you for me is deeply encouraging, uh, especially in the wake of uh, last week when I was talking about some of the things that I discovered what was lurking inside of my heart, um, especially when uh, I, I became aware that I was afraid to enter into the presence of God. And, and I think that's probably a helpful spot for us to start today, because we're going to be talking about today is, is how do you feel when you enter into the presence of God? And for me, it was really helpful helpful to be able to unearth that reality that was underneath so I could name it and uh, put it before the throne of God and, and choose a new way to approach God um, in my time of devotion, in which instead of being fearful of him, choosing to see him as a friend, and not, not just any friend, but, but a dear friend, and trusting that he sees me as a dear friend as well, that he sees me as a person that he loves, that he cares for, that he trusts and he wants to spend time with. And, and, and part of me pushes back against that another part of it just craves and so I'm just choosing to to move towards to what that craving side um, looks like so to start today's uh, today's talk I, I just want you to briefly think for a moment are you excited to enter into time with Jesus and if you're not that's okay this is a journey and I believe it was CS Lewis that said um, that even if you don't feel like engaging in the acts of the faith do it because as you do it, soon your feelings, your affections will follow where your actions are going. And so today we're going to look through a couple of different things that we can do in order to increase our excitement in trying to come before the Lord our God in our time of devotion. So the very first thing that I think is really important to do is that when we come into God's presence is to come into his presence with thanksgiving and praise. Psalm 100 verse 4 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. It's, it's a beautiful invitation for us to have uh, our time with God marinated out of gratitude for all that God has done for us. Because really, we, we can't even begin to count the ways that he has blessed us immensely. So when we begin with that place of thanksgiving, it, it sets our posture right before God and which we're willing and eager to say, God, you are good. And I stand in your presence knowing that you are good. The second thing I invite you to do when you've uh, appropriately walked into the place of thanksgiving with God is to ask a simple question about what God thinks. And, and I don't want it to be like about the, the context of the world or what God thinks about a theological idea. Make it personal. God, what do you think about me? God, when you look at me, what do you see? God, what do you like the most about me? Now, I'll be very honest with you. I grew up in a Calvinistic home, and Calvinism, uh, I, I would say, probably puts too heavy of an emphasis on this doctrine of total depravity, that we are wicked sinners, unable to do anything for our salvation, which, which I agree. Theologically, that is spot on. We can't do anything for our salvation, but that has seeped into our own sense of self as well, where we embrace that wickedness to the point where we think that God's always looking at us with this deeply furrowed brow, heavily disappointed in us because we are sinful people. And that side of Calvinism, or maybe it's hyper-Calvinism that I grew up in, actually goes against the gospel. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ is that he has taken us and he has made us a new creation. So when God looks on us, he doesn't see us as sinners, but instead he sees us as saints. And I'm so thankful that through the blood of Jesus Christ, my identity is different. And knowing that my identity is different gives me that freedom to then enter into the presence of God and ask him, what do you think about me? What do you like most about me? And for, for you, if you're a Calvinist like myself and you struggle with that, it's probably going to be one of the most difficult questions to ask, but it's also one of the most life-giving questions to ask. Because as I have done that on repeat, I have repeatedly sensed the Lord speak to me, words of encouragement, affirmation, and love. And it cuts totally against that, that deeply ingrained Calvinism that's inside of me, 
but oh, it's so good. It's so life-giving. So after you've asked that question, so the, the first was thanksgiving and praise. The second is asking the question, God, what do you think of me? Or what do you see in me? What do you like most about me? The third is to create space in which you can hear a response from God. And the response isn't going to come as an audible voice. It might. Don't expect that. That's very rare that you actually hear an audible voice. Quite often, it'll be an internal gut feeling, some of your own internal thoughts. And just take some time and start journaling it down. And, and sometimes it might be directly from God. Other times, it might be just a mixing of yourself. But just start creating that space where you write down what you have heard or what you think you have heard from God. And this is part of the, the uh, beginning exercises of being able to hear the voice of God. Now, I do think it's important to, to put a little bit of a caveat in there. Um, I've talked as well about the importance of reading scripture, and the importance of reading scripture will help you to be able to discern what is the voice of God compared to what is the voice inside of myself. Because uh, probably about a decade ago, uh, I thought I heard the voice of God, in which reality, it was either my own flesh or maybe even a demonic voice that was impersonating as the voice of God. And it wasn't until a friend uh, coached me through that, and he highlighted... If God said that to you, how does that square away with these aspects of Scripture? And I know I talked about that a few days ago as well, is that Scripture is our benchmark, that God will never contradict Scripture. And this friend lovingly and yet firmly rebuked me, saying, these points in Scripture, God wouldn't speak to you like that. That wasn't the voice of God. You heard something else. And so it's really important for us to be steeped in the Word of God, so that way we can know uh, and distinguish between the true voice of God and impersonating voices. So that's all my caveat on uh, point number three, which is just journaling or writing down what you hear from God. Uh, the fourth point to do with that is then write down your own response. What do you say back to God in response to that? How, how do you respond to him? Do you, do you respond to him with thanksgiving or do you respond to him with repentance or, or uh, do you respond to him with further questions? It, it becomes this ongoing dialogue back and forth. And, and as I said at the beginning of this, uh, seeing Jesus as a friendship will naturally have that kind of dialogue that's happening with it. So those are the four basic ways that I invite you to come into the presence of God to hear his voice. Start with thanksgiving. Ask him a question about who you are and who he sees you to be. Write down any response, any thoughts that come into your head on that. And then also write down how you are going to respond back to what you've heard, whether it's an action or um, just journaling down your own commitments you want to put out from there. That is the way that will respond to this. Now, in the notes below, you will see the different write-up for today. Um, and one of the things that it highlights in there is the importance of journaling. And again, we talked about that last week as well. You can see why these things are building on each other. The importance of journaling is that way you can see and be able to remember different things that you have heard or seen from God. Um, statistically, I believe it's something like uh, you will forget over 70% of what is just simply heard. So <laughs> as I'm speaking, you're going to forget most of this. But if you journal it and you write it down, you're going to retain substantially more. Hence why it's also really important for those notes to be down below as well too. So that way you can read over that and it can go deeper into you. So make sure that you make a daily journal in which you write down the things that you're putting before God, the things you're hearing back from God, the responses you're giving to God. And that way you've got a bit of a record as to how you're going to be relating to God. And so point two lays that out with a bit more systematic detail than I've just described here. So make sure you download those notes and take a look into that. And so to conclude today, I invite you to uh, read Matthew 5 verses 13 through 16 and write down one thing that stood out to you from that passage. Take time to quiet yourself before Jesus and meditate on those verses. Ask Jesus, what are you saying to me in this? And then journal what you your thought processes, journal the things that come to mind, inviting the Holy Spirit to be your teacher and your guide. Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow.